We are on our way to film a snow leopard out in the wild. Not too far away from Almaty, the biggest city of Kazakhstan. Merely 60 kilometers away from the city, up in the highlands, where snow leopards breed and feel secure. There is a video footage of this, but more on that a little bit later. Here's what is known about this rare beast, which very few people got to see in the wild. Snow leopard is a large predator that inhabits mountains of Central Asia. This mountain animal is most active during twilight hours, hunting before sunset and at morning dawn. The Malayan snow leopard, for instance, hunts only at night time. During the day, snow leopards rest lying on rocks. They make lie in mountain crevices among stone heaps, often under hanging rocks. If the lay is comfortable, doesn't get flooded by rain or snow, then snow leopard family can live there for a couple of years. Snow leopard litter consists of two to five cubs. They are born blind and feed on mother's milk, learning the craft of hunting from their mother. By the age of two, snow leopard cubs are ready to live independently. Females raise their cubs for two years. Males do not partake in the upbringing of the little ones, they live separately and provide for themselves. Up to three females can coexist on the vast territory of a single male. The male leopard makes regular rounds of its hunting grounds, patrols slowly, often choosing the same path, sticking to its favorite route. Usually it's a mountain-rich path, like in our case, or along the river bank. The route is usually quite long, that's why snow leopard appears in the same spot only once in a few days. Today we are heading to one of those pathways regularly visited by a pack of snow leopards. Just a few years ago, a photo and even more so a video of snow leopard was a sensation. Not too long ago, guys from Elea Latau National Park had installed photo and video traps up in the mounds, and snow leopard was captured on film. We installed photo traps on the crossings where wild animals roam, and our photo trap got a snow leopard. Rubol, you are a biologist and game manager. When will this young snow leopard be old enough to breed? Last month we set our first photo trap. We got photo of three snow leopards, female and two cubs. Cubs are one and a half, two years old. Will these cubs be able to find a mate when they mature? How are they going to survive if there are only 100 to 150 specimens up here in the mountains? I'm afraid they are going to inbreed. That worries me. Inbreeding is impossible among cats. These species do not mate within the pack. Leopard's lifespan is quite short, about as long as their domesticated relatives, just 13, 14 years. Little longer in captivity, about 20 years. Leopards mostly hunt alone. They either stay still in the ambush, waiting for their prey over the regular path or watering place, or slowly creep up on vigilant ungulates on pastures. When the prey is near, leopard pounces from its ambush overtakes its victim by dashing towards it. If attempt is failed, leopard rarely chase after the prey, and if it must, not for too long. 
It takes its prey to a discreet place to eat, under the rocks, for instance. Snow leopard is on top of food chain. It doesn't compete with other predators. Zoology describes a case where snow leopard successfully preyed on a bear. Until 20th century, snow leopards were considered malicious predators, just like wolves. People were hunting leopards all year round. It's known that in the 19th century, 1,000 snow leopard skins were sold annually. It's extremely warm, 5 centimeters long, soft fur was in high demand. No wonder this beast could sleep on snow and rocks during harshest winters. These days, snow leopard is a red-listed animal everywhere in the world. Our guide, Inspector Vilelatau National Park Sergei Strepkov, lives on the mountain Kodun in Kaskilen Gorge for more than 40 years. He used to work in forestry, now works in national park. He's a pathfinder, spent his whole life in the mountains watching animals all year round. He claims that snow leopards make their lie in the mountains in places inaccessible for humans. Traces of giant cats are seen often, but beasts themselves very rare. Ну, если так посчитать, сколько за свой раз за свою жизнь видел басик? If you were to count, how many times have you seen a snow leopard? About ten times. How often do you see leopard tracks? Two, three times every year. Bear tracks are seen much more often. I think it's the same. They make lay in the mountains because of stable temperature. What is snow leopard's main food source? Mountain goats, roe deer and red deer in winter. I thought it would prefer a boar. Leopard could easily kill it. But do boars really climb so high up? They are roaming alongside with goats. Right now they are in the upper part of the forest. I was driving through the forest and saw 40 of them. Looks like they are descending to me. Yes, even now they are up there. How long leopard can feed on a single boar? Given that leopards eat 3 kilograms of meat per day, I think even more than that. These small concealed video cameras react to an emotion. Rain or snow will not distort its work. Wild animals pay no attention to it. Camera records animals when they pass by. They were seen passing by in the morning, also in the afternoon. How often do you have to change flash drives, batteries? We change the batteries once a month. It was always difficult to keep count of snow leopards around these mountains. They are not desert onagus, which can be clearly seen from afar. Annual records conducted by zoologists have always given rough estimates. Could you imagine keeping count of stealthy beast perfectly concealing itself in its surroundings? How else could it hunt on bare slopes? It only takes leopard to lie down on a rock to blend among stones or dry grass. I experienced this myself in the leopard's reserve in our neighboring country, Kyrgyzstan. You follow the animal through binoculars, watching closely how this beast stalks. You can see it clearly, 
but suddenly leopard stops and disappears, fades away, just as if it wasn't there at all. You begin staring at this bare slope up and down, but in vain, until the moment when leopard decides to reveal itself. There's a light mist in the mountains. The weather is not bad. It was snowing all night. We are in the expedition. We hope we'll get lucky today and we'll be able to film Snow Leopard. Mounting our horses and we are good to go. We can tell how many leopards inhabit this area exactly. We didn't keep record. In a year we're planning to set a photo gate, which will help us to study the area of its habitat. So this means that Nurlan, Yerlan and Nurbol are the ones who can tell us about the well-being of the leopard. Nurbol is a game manager. Snow leopard Nurbol was roaming along, that's why we called him Nurbol. Others two leopards liked each other's company, so we gave them names of guys from the task force. Nurlan and Yurlan. We gave each leopard a name to know exactly where individual leopard lives. Do you know why we name our leopards? Without a name, you can't tell leopards from one another. That's why we gave them names of the guys from the task force and forestry. Nurbol, Nurlan, Yerlan and Jolan. We named four leopards. Guys gave them names so they can keep observing them, study them. We also thought of putting collars with GPS on leopards. Our expedition begins high up in the mountains. There is a harsh road ahead of us, icy, rocky, slippery, to the mountain pass. It's foggy. Can tell if it's a good or bad thing. We shall see. Time will show. Maybe Leopard will let us come closer. Slowly but steady, we are making our way up along the bottom of the gorge, passing the woods, walking across rivers. By the way, horses don't like to walk on ice or icy surfaces in general. They instantly start panicking and twitching from side to side. I hope they won't sleep on steep path ahead. Our guide focuses on surroundings, commenting on everything he finds interesting. These are fresh red deer tracks. This one is about three to three and a half years old. The deer passed over here in the morning. Wolf pack came from that side. I've seen them four days ago. Looks like they caught the deer, they don't come out of the forest. I've tried to walk around both sides of the forest. You can't pass there. The slope is too steep. It's a very dense forest. They've been there for four days now. They have plenty of food there. If they hadn't killed the deer, they would have gone out after the horses or climbed up for goats. It seems that this red deer got separated from the herd. Wolves might have chased them away, scaring this one off its herd. The footprint is quite small. Yes, it was a young deer. This is no ordinary pine, this is a marking place. All kinds of different animals put their marks on the pine. Wolves, boars, even a bear put its mark with its clothes. Those marks were made last year. You can see that the tree is healed now. That's how animals communicate here. This is my territory, and that is someone else's. I am in charge here. Do not trespass. Animals don't have internet. That's how they communicate. This is some kind of an internet, animal internet. Trees like this, branches in our mountains and our forests. Here's the mark. Boars are leaving marks like this. They put it every time they come around this place, so other boars can recognize it. 
Animals live in a world of smells. They understand whether it was a big male or not. They mark their territory here. Another male should not come around here. Not exactly. Boar will come close, sniff that mark to figure out if it's a bigger or smaller male. If it's a smaller male, he would fight him off. They communicate like that, like people do through Internet. We had the same way of communicating long time ago. Here you can see bare teeth marks from last year. Dog caught boar's scent, bucks. It seems that boars are resting in the forest. I hear distant barking. I got to call it back. Boars have been digging here. They came to their feeding ground. They didn't run far. The dog scared them off. The ground is still steaming. It wasn't even powdered with snow. The fog thickens. It's a bad sign. The fog is fading. I hope we'll get lucky. Biologists know when the number of ungulates decreases, predators just switch their hunting grounds to richer fodder lands. In doing so, they might venture too close to humans, which may result in predators attacking livestock. Is snow leopard dangerous? The question often asked by tourists. Throughout last century, there were only two cases of leopard attacking humans. In 1940, rabbit leopard attacked two travelers, injuring them severely. In the late 80s, skinny old ground fang leopard pounced on a lone traveler in the highlands. And so our little expedition continues to ascend. Slopes are getting steeper, water splashes can be heard from afar. Snow leopard is the most mysterious and secretive animal. Fog is getting dense. There are four of us. Let's see what will happen next. Ahead of us is our guide, Strepkov. Two huskies by his sides. He and his dogs are inseparable. It's cold. It was snowing last night. That's why we can only see fresh footprints. We are climbing that narrow pass on horseback. We have a problem with our shoes. Our cameraman Blood's boots are cleaning to stirrups. It's dangerous. When a horse is climbing up a barely visible path, suitable only for mountain goats, Pebbles are falling from under the hoofs into the abyss. It gets quite scary. Shoes and stirrups should barely be thrust, so you can jump off the horse in case it will stumble and fall down the cliff. What kind of shoes you got? Most reliable, like felt boots, waterproof, Warm. Our ascent is at its end. Last hundred meters on the melted southern slope are the most stressful. And here we are, on the top. The fog faded as soon as we came up here. You can see all of our nature. The city is covered with fog. At this point, we are higher than the clouds. Incredible view. The snow is waist-deep on top of the mountain. Black grease is singing somewhere in the woods. 
At this time of the year, they feed on needles of Tian Shan spruce. Everything else is covered in snow. The slope becomes impassable. Snow doesn't get blown down here. For five months, it accumulates up here, and our horses are barely dragging themselves up. Here, animals move strictly one after another along one path. And they call it a long snowfall winter. Here on a gentle slope, almost on the crest of the mountain, specialists set their photo trap. It's a good spot, nothing prevents the view. And most importantly, you can see all inhabitants of National Park. Raw deer, mountain goats, red deer, and even boars. We place photo trap at a distance of 15 meters so it can be triggered by a movement. If any animal comes around here, camera will start filming automatically. What about farther than 15 meters? It might not trigger them. Can it film a snowcock? Any kind of animal within a range, even small one. What if the wind sways the grass? Now the wind is a problem. This exact photo traps is in the right place, no bushes or branches to trigger it, otherwise it would have run out of batteries within a day. Why is it a good place for filming? Because it's a crossing for all the animals. Mountain goats and red deer pass through here. Snow leopards prey. Three days have passed since we set that photo trap. Did you get anything? We just checked the tape. Not a single animal passed our camera for the last three days. We didn't get anyone here. But there are other spots opened right now. There was little snow this year. Animals are grazing elsewhere. There are enough places to graze. But we are not giving up. We'll leave the photo trap here. We'll check it in a month. Yes, we should come back in a month, double check in 10 days. Surely we'll get something. During our raid, I saw fresh deer's tracks. Leopards should appear from that side. Why would leopard come out here? To get himself a picture on your photo trap? He doesn't know it's being filmed. He will follow his foot. According to zoological experts, total number of leopards in our mountains doesn't exceed 100 to 150 individuals. Sergei, what do you think? Maybe there are much more of those beasts up here. Maybe it's due to leopards' extreme stealth? It's extremely difficult to reach snow leopards' habitat. Right now, they live even higher up in the mountains, where mountain goats graze. Now we are at lower levels. This is where mountain goats come. Snow leopards descend to prey on deer. Goats are not so numerous here compared to how many there used to be. Those dogs are inspectors' constant companions. These huskies are very smart dogs. They are very aggressive towards wild animals but affectionate to humans. Such bent tail is a signature of this breed. Have a look. If the tail makes one and a half ringlet, it means the dog is pedigree. Northern people ruthlessly shoot dogs if they can't chase wild beasts. We have more sympathetic attitude towards these animals. They will show you the way, will lead you out of fog. With dogs like this, you can spend the night if you ever get lost in the mountains. Their warm fur will protect you from freezing to death. Recently, Sergei Ivanovich got lucky. Not only did he witness snow leopard, he also managed to get it on camera. He never leaves his camera behind. Maybe that's why the naturalist got so lucky. Here's what happened. He went off to patrol his territory, like usually reading footprints, as if it was his favorite magazine, page by page. Lately, wolves are running rampant, chasing the ungulates. Ranger's dogs were nearby, but suddenly rushed to the fir forest. Wars, Stripkov thought to himself and began to call his huskies back. But for some reason, dogs continued barking, pointing their heads upwards. It might be a lynx. He dismounted and began climbing in the woods after his dogs. In the woods, he saw large fruit prints, twice as big as lynxes. He raised his head 
and was stunned. A leopard with a huge tail was looking at him. I was sitting when dogs ran in the forest. The noise was I thought they were attacked by a boar. In 15 minutes, one dog leaned its paws against the tree. I thought to myself, it's a lynx. I should film it. Just as I approached, I heard purring. You can tell that this is an aggressive beast. It's capable of killing you. I could feel it's large. But I couldn't see what it was. I came closer, and it jumped from one tree to another. Instantly, I realized it was a snow leopard. You judged by its tail. Of course, I could see it. You can't confuse this animal with any other. They have a very long tail. Just half a second is enough to realize it's a snow leopard. Then I came even closer, about 10 to 15 meters, tried to film it on the tree. Snow leopards have such a great disguise. I knew exactly where it was. I could see it within 10 meters through my binoculars, but I couldn't get it with my camera. From that point, I was only able to get its tail. It won't show me its muzzle. The beast was aggressive. I was afraid to move since leopard could attack me at any moment. It could attack my dogs or me. I've changed my position. After some time, the beast became less aggressive, even showed me its eyes and muzzle. And then I filmed it. Leopard was calm now, but I couldn't get a picture. If only you could see how it was standing on the tree with its head down the trunk and its tail up. I wasn't able to get this on camera. Beast's eyes met with humans. Then it skillfully jumped on the next tree a few meters away. Inspector was feeling uncomfortable, his skin covered in goose bumps. Leopard is nearby, hiding behind tree trunk. The man called his dogs back and slowly went away, trying not to scare the beast. Let's forgive naturalist reporter for filming with shaking hands. It's difficult to film on a steep slope. That's the story. How long ago Snow Leopard was here? Very recently, an hour and a half ago. We would have filmed that leopard, but we can't due to the fog. Two deers were going that way. Leopard was following them. Then he'll go back to the mountains. Was this leopard alone? Yes. It's not very old. It was up to the mountains, following along the tracks. Did he see us? No, he wasn't running, walked in a calm place. The footprint is still soft, not frozen yet. Footprint had no icy crust on fingertips. That's how experienced trackers can tell for how long ago Beast was there. The fact that we didn't get to see him is incredible, but he's still somewhere close. Went uphill and into the rocks. This rare and beautiful beast is highly revered. For example, all climbers, conquerors of all mountain 7,000 meter peaks are called snow leopards. Snow leopard is on the coat of arms of the largest city of Kazakhstan, Almaty. It is depicted on Kazakh banknotes. Leopard can be seen on carpets, ornaments, and post stamps. Its images are used even on colorful murals like, for example, on this flower bed of real hyacinths and in its center, snow leopard. The beast is carefully protected. That is why we are slightly disappointed that we couldn't film this majestic lord of the mountains. I think it's for the best. The snow leopard is cautious animal. The less people encounter and disturb him, the low is the risk of scaring away the remains of the small population of this graceful predator in our country.